So I'm going to head on the road again. It's fairly early on a Sunday morning. Going to leave Casablanca and head on to Rabat. So, well, Casablanca is really the economic hub of Morocco. Rabat is the political center. It's actually the capital. I know a lot of people, including myself, thought it was Marrakesh, but no, Rabat is the capital. Actually, just half the population of Casablanca, so relatively small and quiet a city. But also looks to be some nice sights there, and I think it's going to be worth checking out. I'm super excited to show you this city that isn't really a big player on the tourist trail of Morocco. But let me take you on a little tour around and I'll show you what Rabat's really like. So stepping out into Rabat for the first time. So let's go walking, see if we've found the right direction. And this should actually take us very, very shortly to the Moroccan parliament. So I believe that's actually it right there. This old wall and gate ahead. I'm wondering if this is the start of the Medina. Well, I'm sure there's more charming routes towards the hotel than this one that I've taken. Just trusting in Google for now, really. I want the shortest route possible because the bag is actually quite heavy. Should just be around the corner from the hotel now though, so at least I can drop that off and then go and explore a little more. This is going to be the road that I'm staying on, just up by the next block there. And I look down here and uh, I'll show you the sea there. So this part of Rabat's beach isn't exactly the most charming, but got to persevere anyway. If we follow up this way, basically round by the ocean front, then should come to the old Medina part. It's a strange area really, we've got this lighthouse and the sea behind me there. Then over on this side, you've just got this huge, huge cemetery. It goes behind those white walls as well over that way. But then up in this direction, you've got this uh, kind of walled city, which I guess must be the old central Medina. Let's walk towards that and take a look. I'm certainly a bit confused about the lay of the land here so far. I seem to be just by the busy beachfront, but in some kind of small, small old cemetery and then yeah this that i thought was maybe the medina up here this is not the medina the medina is a bigger area just over there but this supposedly is the casbah although i thought casbahs were just more of a one individual castle rather than a kind of walled city like this It's popular down on this little beach run here. Nice sandy area, you've got a lot of people just enjoying it. It's not too hot here at the moment, particularly as the clouds have been covering all morning. A lot of people out there surfing as well. See what I mean about a strange area? Graves overlooking the beach. I think I've actually found the entrance. Just round by the road here. Also coming over the hill, you see what must be the real Medina of the city. All the white buildings along here. This could be the interesting part to explore a little bit later. But for now, let's have a look at this Casbah. I see people walking in, so this looks promising. Uh, the Casbah uh, seems to be insta-hassle. Just uh, descended on by people just saying, no, this way is closed, this way, go this way, and uh, all of that sort of thing. So no real fun there, but I'm going to continue on the way I want to go anyway. I didn't expect these wonderful little quiet streets up here in the Caspar, these beautiful blue, white, yellow painted houses. It's lovely up here. Well, this seems to be the area where I saw everyone sitting on the edge of earlier. Okay, this is a nice spot. This has got to be a place where I can get a soft drink, relax for a little while, and get some shade as well. So now this certainly is one of the entrances to the Medina. This is looking very, very Medina-like from my experiences of Medina so far. Certainly doesn't feel anywhere near as cramped like walking around the Marrakesh Medina. 
I see an open square here with some smoke down here. Let's go and take a look, see what this could be. Oh, this little square in the middle of the Medina could be just what I was looking for. This is certainly, uh, yeah, another food area, a bit like the one I was at yesterday in Casablanca. Okay, this little side street from the square looks uh, heaving busy. Lots of places to eat here, but uh, also I think I see a juice stand up ahead. This is just a treat. This is lovely, proper fresh orange, no messing around. There's a whole bunch of real oranges. 10 dirham, one euro, not complaining at all. It's really quite lively and fun, the Medina area here. I don't know what they were talking about when they said Casablanca's more busy and bustling than Rabat. Oh, the smell when you walk down here is just intense. That huge, huge place, all the spices on display there. Beautiful. And behind me you see the site that you see from pretty much all over central Rabat. The Grand Mosque. And stepping down this side street and the areas around here, I just feel like I'm back in the Casbah sort of area. The buildings again, this uh, whitewashed with light blue around. It's only one of those times I'm really, really pleased to have Google Maps, so I don't think I'd ever make it out of here. The gateway to the Medina. Here we go. So just got outside the gates of the Medina to this lovely square. Beautiful mosque there, some beautiful buildings all around. The walls of the Medina just behind me. Really, really nice. Really nice around here. Okay, so I've come out for a bit of late lunch, early dinner, a meal I like to call Bunner. So, the reason I'm having this now, I know that I'm going to be heading later on to an American style place and they're just going to have pizzas and that sort of food. I don't want that, I want Moroccan food. So I'm going to stop off and make sure I get some Moroccan food right now. Mmm, oh, mmm. Wow, that is awesome. That's really, really tasty. The beef is so soft and it's got this beautiful flavor and beautiful spice to it. Look at that, you can just, uh, you just see the oil that's cooked in, this nice thickened down spicy sauce. That is beautiful, lovely. So just coming out of the apartment this morning, heading to some of the big hitter tourist sites today. Going to start off trying to get the tram over to the Hassan Tower and the Mohammed V Mausoleum. Right over the other side of the city centre, but should be an easy tram ride if I can remember where the tram is. What you see behind me is the Hassan Tower. This was commissioned and built in the late 12th century by Al Mansur. It was originally destined to become the largest minaret and the biggest mosque in the world, but it was never completed. El Mansur himself died in 1199 and all work stopped. And what you see today, this is basically what's left. And here you see the river flowing out to the Atlantic Ocean over there, separating central Rabat, where I'm at, from Sali, just over here. And here on this beautifully kept street, we see Moroccan flags flying all the way down, ceremonial guards positioned outside. This is the mausoleum of Mohammed V the former king of Morocco. The tombs of both him and his two sons are here, King Hassan II and Prince Abdullah. A very grand and calm space in a really nice part of the city. Now I think it's time we wander on, past the history, and into some of the more modern day Rabat. So this is Chela. It's quite an imposing sight when you're driving past on the road on this side of the city. This huge, huge fortification. Basically, I think this was built in the 13th century and it was a Muslim necropolis. Nowadays, it's an archaeological site. You can't actually go inside, but a lot of people seem to like just walking around the outside of it, particularly around sunset when the weather starts to get a bit cooler. Of course, a mad Englishman like me is just walking here in the height of the afternoon, but I don't have much choice. It's the time I've got. You see over to this side, the road that runs down this part of town. This is the road I took back from the south of the city yesterday. There's this valley below. And then looking out in front, you look over to the estuary of the river. 
the river that separates Rabat and Sali. Oh boy, and this is one grand view when you step down to this side. Looking out over the estuary. Turn the camera around, feast your eyes on this. And you see the walls of Chala going downhill. So the taxis, yeah, there's loads of them and they're really, really cheap. It's all very well and good as long as they can actually take you where you want to go. Now, I just spoken to a whole bunch and they all just look completely confused when I show my destination. It's not really that confusing. You know, they drive around for about all the time. They should know the damn place. But anyway, I'm walking because I just can't seem to get a taxi to take me. Oh, anyway, here's the, uh, the parliament. On a nicer, sunnier day than passing by here yesterday. So I'm back down to the seafront now and this pretty awesome building you see behind me is the National Museum of Photography. Wouldn't really expect that. I thought it was some, uh, some old fort or something. I guess it is, but nowadays holding the museum. Alright, well that was a bit of a mission, but I found a Moroccan restaurant now which gets some pretty decent reviews and I just walked past it, had a look at the menu. And uh, yeah, it looks great. So I got a uh, chicken tagine coming along with a Moroccan salad. This looks fantastic. The Moroccan salad's come out and I was expecting just to play a salad, but I don't even know what to make of this. I don't really know what it is, but it looks just beautiful. Now let's try some of these little dishes. I really can't resist this. Mmm, mmm. Wow. Oh, that is fantastic. So let's see what this next one's like. Oh, beautiful again. Beautiful again. Kuliri tomato based sauce with a ton of spice in there. This uh, looks like uh, aubergine or eggplant, whatever you like to call it. Wow. Again. Just this beautiful, beautiful uh, Moroccan spice there. Not hot spice, but just the flavor is incredible. Oh, would you look at this tagine, it is literally sizzling. That is beautiful, that is beautiful. That is just so, so sizzly hot. Oh yeah. Beautiful soft chicken crispy around the edges in this almost curry like paste beautiful beautiful very happy with that that was totally delicious i leave absolutely stuffed with a touch of food coma but that's going to see me through for a while excellent excellent meal back in the cathedral square now probably not its actual name but i can't think of a better name for it really there's a pretty big ass cathedral in it i just walked in as a kind of random thing Got questioned as to my purpose there, and then they turned out to be very, very nice people who were very generous with their time and uh, take me around. The guy there who does some volunteering there, called uh, Jean Baptiste, super friendly and interesting, telling me about not only the church but also his life, how he moved from Cote d'Ivoire to Morocco at the age of 16. The striking thing about the church is the brightness of it for a start, the most beautiful sunlight coming in through the stained glass windows. But then also the stained glass windows on the, uh, the upper section of the church, which have this really kind of Moroccan feel and almost uh, kind of uh, Islamic uh, symmetry of patterns to it. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this little video on Rabat. If you got this far, don't be shy with that like button. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you haven't done already, hit subscribe too. Next, I'll be off to Chef Chouan, so there'll be a video coming from there shortly. But for now, I'm gonna leave you with a little video of a fridge on wheels. Bye for now, folks. A fine example of Moroccan hospitality on the wall. Something I'm certainly not getting from the owner of this apartment, I tell you. Anyway, that's a long and boring story, so I'll spare you the details, but you gotta check this out. There's wheels on everything. So, the table. It's on wheels. We just freely wheel it around. 
But it gets a lot sillier than that. You're not gonna believe this. This makes no sense at all. So over in the kitchen here, see a full-size fridge here. And guess what? It's on wheels. Whee! So whenever you wanna move the fridge around, you're free to just move it around.